Hear ye, hear ye, gather round for another edition of Young King's Wrestling featuring the Spooky Sound Boys. As always, you can find us on most platforms streaming your favorite podcast episodes, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. If you're listening on iTunes, leave us a review of the five-star kind. Subscribe to us on YouTube at YK Wrestling. Links to all the platforms and merchandise are available at ykwrestling.com. Welcome back for the 217th time to the Nuckafee Buckingham Palace. As always, I am the Thespian T.C. Fontaine, a.k.a. T.C.F. Baby. Please say the baby. Joined by King Reek, House of Havoc, first of his name. Yeah. We back. Welcome back. Yes, sir. Another one. Shout out to Halloween. It's Halloween coming up in a couple days. Yes, sir. Love it, man. Right around the corner. I would have dressed up and stuff today, but you know. Don't you just love how they spend the whole last week of October promoting all their Christmas shit? Bro, that shit irritates me. It's so disrespectful. Like, I I, I get it. If y'all don't mess with, like, the the meaning behind Thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. like, the original meaning, I get that. We ain't about to discount the fact that this is the ultimate food holiday. Right. A holiday to eat. And y'all just want to skip past that to go to Christmas? I don't appreciate that, fam. It's a holiday to eat. Yeah. Now with that, it's Thanksgiving appreciation real quick before we get into anything else. I know Halloween ain't happened yet. What is Thanksgiving appreciation? We need to show some uh, respect to the... to. What's your favorite Thanksgiving dish, fam? Listen, man. It it, it it it's it don't get no better than a mac and cheese. Listen, you know what I'm <laughs> listen. That that that's one of the things like you watch the process. You know what I'm saying? Man. Like putting together because my mom would never be doing the thing where she be making like six different cheeses. Yeah, putting it together. Rah. It's at least like four in my recipe. Yo, just just mixing it all in. As soon as you, you see it come at, out of there, bruh. Gotta make the eggs in that bit. Mm-hmm. Gotta have like two different Dang. types of milk. Facts. All that. Shout out to turkey too. Y'all be stunning on turkey sometimes. Yeah. Turkey, turkey go ham. Not for sure. Dude. Like, especially that leftover turkey. Put it on Ooh. a sandwich. <laughs> and we're going crazy. Shout out to Thanksgiving. Hey. <laughs> And uh, shout out to the NBA being back too. That's uh, yes, sir. I miss the NBA basketball. Mm-hmm. Game been nice to my parlays. Terrible. Atlanta, Atlanta was on the bet list on night one. The the band list, the do not bet <laughs> list. Trey Young, Dejounte, Dejounte Murray is already on it from last year. Can't put him, Kevin Durant. It's certain dudes you can't put your trust in. Right. Like on your parlays. One Kevin Durant said he'd be crashing parlays on purpose. So I definitely ain't betting on him. Yeah, that, that that's crazy. Y'all, y'all some fools for putting Kevin Durant on y'all tickets. And then get I'm mad saying. when he don't when he don't fulfill whatever odds that listen. Did it y'all be so. y'all gotta pay attention. Self-awareness. But uh, shout out to the NBA being back, and shout out to my Nebraska Cornhuskers football. It's light at the end of the tunnel. We went through hell for like the last ten years, and we one win away from being bowl eligible. Oh shit! Look at that. For we ain't been bowl eligible since I've lived in Las Vegas, <laughs> and I've been here since 2017. 
coming up out the mud. Yeah. Going on seven years. I ain't seen my team playing a bowl game, have a winning season at all. So it, it feels good, man. We got a better record than uh, the media darling over there in Colorado. You can go. I'm bad. It down bad now. Oh, listen. I'll tell. I try to tell y'all about them. Y'all was <laughs> week one. Y'all was embarrassing. Week two, they faced us, and y'all was even more embarrassing. It was like one. We we not really that good. At least, especially the beginning of the season, we weren't that good. Like this, this has been like a a progress. Like you get better every week. Right. We we were trash, and y'all was just hype. Like oh, they beat Nebraska. So what? Man. Get no props for beating Nebraska. <laughs> You don't get no props for beating TCU and they whole team was gone. Like that's what I'm saying, man. Ran into some real competition. TCU never should have been in the natty to be true. Yeah. <laughs> like it was all oh, they beat a, they beat the team that was in the national title after everybody knew they wasn't supposed to be there back in January. We saying. get to September and y'all just copping please because y'all like somebody. Just, Listen, I pray on Colorado downfall all last <laughs> offseason. <laughs> It just the prayers just took a while to catch up, but they here now. I don't, and now they copping please now. I mean, Dion told y'all next year that why was y'all acting the way y'all was acting all September, right? That was embarrassing. Like anyway, <laughs> shout out to the Las Vegas Aces. That's the real back. winners. <laughs> back to back, back to bike. I had the parade. The parade was going crazy. Had two chains there. Oh shit! Everybody was faded. I didn't go <laughs> to the parade. Know. I didn't, I didn't make it. But uh, shout out. They went to go see Usher too. Like Usher invited the Aces to his show oh, over on man. the strip. So yeah, that that seemed oh, like great. it was a time. <laughs> oh, he just he just uh he prepping because you know he got a he got a job to do in a couple months. Out there. Oh yeah, Usher got the key to the city already. They gave him the key to the city like two weeks ago. Yo. <laughs> What? That ass. man is from Atlanta, by the That's way. That's what I'm saying. Like, what, what you mean? This man is from Atlanta, probably got the key to the city there. This man, I don't know if he still do, but at one point was a minority owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Oh, he, it's crazy he, work. He, he, he must have came up off that by now. He had to have. I'm about to say, ain't, ain't shit to do with that no more. <laughs> Right, it, uh, that value peaked in 2016. I would have like, hey, saying a little bit of that. Now he got the key to Las Vegas, so he, he said he the king. Let's say he said Brian leaving. Shit, I'm leaving too. Facts. <laughs> Facts. You need hey Usher might as well buy a stake in the Aces too. Yeah, hey, auto, shit. already got Tom Brady on there. Right. Ain't that some shit? He gonna leave the year he retired. He's still getting the ring. <laughs> like, Thanks. That that's crazy. Shit. That's eight rings for my dude. Now. Oh, eight, eight of them joints. Hey, let's uh, let's talk about a little wrestling though, man. Let's uh, get into this week in wrestling history. It was it was some some events that happened this week. Uh, 1997 Halloween Havoc in Las Vegas. They used to have Halloween Havoc in Vegas every year. Now we we stuck with double or nothing. <laughs> do with that uh, do Damn. with that what you will. Uh, but right. <laughs> everybody know from 1997 Halloween had it. Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero, cruiserweight championship. Rey came out there with the purple the purple fit. Clean. Everybody know that classic <laughs> match. Probably one of the best. It might be Rey Mysterio's best match. It's up there. It's definitely Might up be there. Eddie's best match. I mean, it's a few matches that Eddie had that I, I like yeah. a little bit more than this one, but it's up there. It's like top three in my Eddie Guerrero matches list. Mm. Uh, the match versus Kurt at WrestleMania, that's up yeah, there. Yeah, that's top two. Yeah, they, they at least top two. So I, I can't think of the third right now. But right. It'll come to me. Uh, the year 2000, uh, RIP to Yoko Zuna passed away. This week in the year 2000, age 34, young, and uh, seemed like he wanted to go out that way. This man wanted to be that big, like it was. It was like a sense of pride for him. Uh, Right, man. This dude, 
Yokozuna, I don't Yokozuna don't seem like he was that tall. No. So like he really don't. There's a lot of weight to carry when you I don't think he was six foot. He might have just barely been six foot. Yeah, no, nah, the, the the TV TV be doing that. I, I learned from like seeing some of these motherfuckers in person, like they right. they do the enhancement on these people when they on TV. I told y'all I met Brian Cage and me and him the same height. That's crazy. <laughs> Brian Cage on TV looked like he's six foot three. I swear he do. And this man is is so Yokozuna's build height was six four. Mm-hmm. He looks shorter than that. That's his build saying. height. I tell you, like I met Cardona, he barely taller than me. Yeah, these wrestlers be capping. Like for Adam real? Cole said, he's six foot. Nah, I will never believe that. I don't care. That's like, the biggest lie in wrestler history. Like they say between... Yokozuna was six foot four. I don't believe it. He seemed like he was a little bit smaller than that. And it was like the weight was just like it seemed like it was weighing him down. Bro looked uncomfortable walking. Mm-hmm. He'd be walking fast as shit though to the ring. Right. To be six hundred pounds. <laughs> Motherfucker be zooming. He was fast in the ring too. Them Samoans agile. So. And listen. <laughs> Shout out to the bloodline. More on the bloodline later on. Mm. Uh, 2005, TNA held the inaugural Bound for Glory pay-per-view. And uh, originally in the main event, it was supposed to be Kevin Nash versus Jeff Jarrett for the NWA title uh, with Tito Ortiz as the special guest referee. Yes, Tito Ortiz, TNA legend. Yeah. Forgot about (laughs) that shit. Yeah, Tito Ortiz had a few runs there. Uh, but uh, Kevin Nash had a medical emergency before the event, so uh, there was a gauntlet to determine his replacement, which was won by Rhino, who about 40 minutes prior won a Monsters Ball match versus Abyss, Jeff Hardy, and Sabu. Yeah. Yes. Rhino uh, goes on to beat Jeff Jarrett for the NWA title, win his first one, one of the best moments in TNA history. Uh, he lost the title back to Jerry like two weeks later. <laughs> uh, elsewhere true. in this event, AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels in a 30-minute Iron Man match. Uh, AJ Styles won to retain the X Division title. That is a top three AJ Styles match for sure across his entire career. That's up there. That's why X Division was popping. Yeah. They they was putting the X Division on him, Chris Daniels, Chris Saban. Elix Skipper. Mm. I'm going to remember my dude primetime Elix Skipper. Come on now. Yes, sir. That's my boy. What do uh, old boy uh, Loki or Cabal? Loki? Yeah. Was. Listen. Hey, we don't talk about Cabal. We can talk about Loki, though. <laughs> yeah, that's old times, man. Yeah, that was a big failure. Rough. Big failure. Uh, more TNA news. Uh, your boy Terry. Signed with TNA this week back in 2009. October 26, I believe, 27. It was October 27, 2009. He signed with TNA. I lasted about 70 more days until I I stopped watching TNA for a whole decade. I remember it it was a day they went live versus Monday Night Raw in 2010. That was January 4th. That was the last episode of TNA I watched. Because I wasn't that about was... to do no channel surfing stuff. I wasn't about to do that. No. And that was 79 more than I did. Because when I heard That's crazy. That he was there, him and Bischoff, total nonstop ass. No. Nah, not yeah. for me. Not Everybody for me. knew what it was at that point. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. And yeah, somehow uh, they're still alive, so I don't know. Yeah, they, they still kicking. And uh, more more uh, Impact Wrestling slash TNA news coming up nice. on this show. Uh, but uh, one bit of uh, one more bit of history. 2018 this week, the uh, first ever all women's pay per view in WWE Evolution. It's been five years. They have not done another one. I don't know. Run it back. That. Run it back. Run it back. You need man. to run that back. You got too many women to pull this off now. Bro, listen. Like it's, it's way deeper than... It was deep back then. Yeah. So it's much deeper now. 
Uh, there's no excuse. There's there's no between tri- Triple H is is running the show now. Like there's no excuse. right between main roster and NXT together. You could make that a whole. You could make that a two night special if you really wanted to. Yeah, like, it's way more star power than it was too. Facts. Like back then, we, you know, we just had it was really just Ronda and and Charlotte. Like Becky was was yeah. starting that ascent, but mm-hmm. she didn't hit that peak yet. Yeah, not wasn't. yet. Yeah, but like, like outside of that, yeah. But now we got you know Rhea, we got Bianca, you still got Charlotte. Becky's a bigger star. You got all the women in in NXT, like we mentioned. Damage we control. No Damage control. Jade is here. J- Listen. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, man. There's no excuse if we don't get an evolution pay per view in 2024. Triple H slacking, slacking on your job, man. If if Vince McMahon is still there <laughs> by this time next year, we don't know, we don't know yet. But Ari Emanuel, Vince McMahon, Triple mm-hmm. H, whoever is involved. If we don't get an evolution two in 2024, guess what? Listen, shit, yes, sir. Might have hit that button. Expeditious. We still gonna be heading out peasants this time next year, I'm sure. Oh. Y'all ain't gonna stop the nonsense. <laughs> There's always gonna be nonsense to talk about. So listen, this 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 accolade will be alive as long as you niggas exist. Yeah, honestly. And I don't think y'all going nowhere anytime soon. So, ain't that ain't that what, what, like where it was started? Like it was, it was something they did. I'm pretty sure of the first one. I'm I'm pretty sure because I'm trying to think back to the first one. I'm pretty sure it was you niggas. It had to so, have been because it it, was, it had to have been like around the time I, I remember it was around the time CM Punk right. like got signed to AW, and it was just oh, tripping. was it, it the dude been, that was crying on TV? Nah, the the so the first peasant of the week after CM Punk debut, it was it was a uh, who was it? It was it was something to do when we was at SummerSlam. That's what I remember. Mm-hmm. I can go check. I can I can go check my notes history. Is I can't. I ain't gonna do it on this episode. It's gonna yeah, take no, me a no, minute. No. But I can go check the history of my notes, and we can find out who the first peasant was. To say, I, I feel like it was one of you niggas. Like something, had something, been. something, something y'all posted on, on the discourse, right? And had to, it's always had to let something. y'all have it. <laughs> it's always something. Uh, let's get into these birthdays too, though, man. This past week, Carmella, happy birthday to Carmella. Hope, uh, hope the pregnancy is going well with her. Right. Hope to see her back soon. Whenever she does a uh, drop. We, sure. we miss Carmella. We miss the moonwalking, smack talking, right. Staten Island princess. It's been a minute. It's been a while since like she's done anything noteworthy. Right, and, like her and Zelina winning the titles was the last time. Them winning the titles was the last time because they held the titles for a minute. Yeah. Didn't defend them bitches at all. Why are you out here talking about they cursed? Right. I, I had I had some issues with uh with the champs being on every single show this past week. At least one half of the champs. You know yeah. how I feel. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's neither here nor there. Happy <laughs> birthday this past week to my guy Flash Funk, also known as Two Cold Scorpio. Man still out here hitting four fifties and he like still? 50 years old. <laughs> Going crazy. Harry Saturn, happy birthday to him. Uh, El Fantasmo had a birthday this past week, and uh, apparently he spent it in Vegas at the New Japan show last night. So shout out to him. If y'all don't watch New Japan, y'all have no idea who El Fantasmo is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rosa Mendez, y'all remember her? Happy birthday. Ooh, okay. uh, CM Punk had a birthday this past week. My man's is 45? 45? It's Googleable. It is Google. How old is CM Punk, Alexa? Pepsi Phil. He's 45. He is? Oh, yeah. Shit. Man's is old out here. Damn. Watching CM Punk since he was 25. That is crazy. <laughs> That's a fact. I'm old, fam. 
Uh, Taka mentioned no cool. Everybody loved Taka, former light heavyweight champion in WWE. Kai and Tai, him and Funaki. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cutting off, cutting off penises. Choppy, choppy, pee pee. Yeah, y'all was tripping, Vince Russo. What was wrong with y'all, bro? Uh, I'm, crash TV. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna actually credit this one to Vince Russo too. It might have, it might have been his idea. It might not have. Uh, happy birthday to the first and only male women's champion in WWE history, Harvey Whippleman. <laughs> I know that was Vince. Yeah, that had to have been Russo. Hey, nobody. Oh, else. listen, you know how much attention we would get from this, bro. <laughs> Nobody else is pitching this. Oh, God damn it. Is it going to get us attention? And do it. Get out of here, bro. Uh, Bobby Fish. Happy birthday to Bobby Fish. My man's turned 93. That's Bobby Fish. (laughs) Facts. No, I know that nigga older than that. Come on now. I know Bobby Fish sparred with Abraham Lincoln back in the day. You know, Abraham Lincoln used to wrestle. Bobby Fish was what when they invented MMA. Facts. <laughs> he the godfather. He was sitting right there chilling, talking about, oh, word, let's get this thing going. Hey, y'all need to put him into the, the pioneer wing of the, the UFC Hall of Fame. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bobby Fish that old. Uh, happy birthday this past week to Kevin Sullivan. Uh, Kurgan had a birthday this past week. And uh, everybody's favorite MVP had a birthday this past week, too. Hey. Shout out to him. Shout out to Christy Hemme. Uh, the Hall of Famer, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. And uh, we're going to NXT for these last two birthdays. Former NXT champion, former two-time NXT champion, the big bad booty nephew, Braun Breaker. And a special, very, 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 very special happy birthday to the brand new NXT Women's Champion, Lara Valkyria. Yeah. Happy birthday to her. Happy birthday to Bird Woman. Put on the slapper, man. Oh, yeah. Listen, she was going crazy. For real. Now, it shocked me. I didn't think she was going to win. Now, yeah. I found out it was her birthday the day before, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. Back in my mind, I'm like, maybe. Maybe they'll yeah. do it. But, yeah, man, I wasn't ready. Shout out. So, shout out to her. And uh, what's next for, for Becky Lynch? We're going to find out. Zia Lee about to whoop that ass. Like, how oh, dare you drop the belt before the shot? <laughs> That's what I can't Zia, wait to see. Zia was this, out here just dropping bodies. Yeah, listen, we used to pray for times like this. Right. Zia Lee getting some actual, doing something. We've been, we've been praying for the last year and a half. Yeah, and man. so yeah, Becky Lynch doing the damn thing, putting everybody over the right way. Zaylee's next. Can't wait. We'll see uh, how that pans out tomorrow. But uh, yeah, let's get into the royal address of rumors. Uh, TNA is back. Told y'all more TNA talk. Yes, this sir. is a TNA episode at this point. Uh, <laughs> at the conclusion of Bound for Glory last week, and uh, Bound for Glory, it was it was ill. It was a fun. Fun time. Let's uh let's talk about Bound for Glory 2023 real quick. Uh I went back and watched uh Alex Shelley in the main event defeated Josh Alexander. He's still the impact women's champion. Uh Trinity what? retained her belt versus Mickey James, too, uh by a submission. Tapped her out. Two very good matches in the co-main event. Uh Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay defeated Mike Bailey. Uh got some more Will Ospreay stuff coming up here. Okay. And uh, I mean, all the matches are good that I saw. It looks like Chris Saban versus Kenta. That was fire. That's what's up. Yeah, it was Chris Saban on the road too. So shout oh, out to the Motor City Machine Guns. Both of them just doing work as as the uh, champions, single champions in uh in Impact Wrestling. But uh, at the end of the show, there's this whole video package, and it looked like they had some money behind it too. Mm-hmm. Like this dude, they is this all the all the like the whole roster, like the 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 names who matter on the roster. Uh Frankie Kazarian comes out of a swamp. And this is what confused the hell out of me. 
<laughs> right. This dude, Frankie Kazarian, <laughs> raises out the swamp with this box. Like, and he's just soaking wet in the forest. And like Josh Alexander's there, Jordan Grace is there, uh, Eddie Edwards and Alicia Edwards are there. Just like the whole roster, who matters, is there yeah. in this forest in the middle of the night, meeting up on something just very important. Like, what y'all do? I was like, what's going on here? Right. And then after a while, I'm like, oh shit, I know what's about the I know what's going on here. That is. Frankie Kazarian sets the box down. And like Ooh. Jordan Grace opens the box. And then just all the the history of TNA just comes out the box. And uh Impact Wrestling is returning to being TNA again. So self-awareness is always beneficial, guys. Facts. They recognize the facts that the fans still chant TNA. Mm-hmm. Why not? Everybody still refers to Impact Wrestling as TNA. Y'all, y'all can't hide from who you used to be. Right. That stench is still lingers on. So you might as well embrace it and live with it and just learn from it. And, and you guys have tried to your, your heart is to turn around the, the whole mindset of it. And Ooh. I think Impact is in a way better position than they were six years ago when they changed the name for the first time. Mm-hmm. Seven it, years. I think it's like seven or eight I, years since then. I think like it, 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 too much changed after they, they, they flipped the name off of it. I feel like like as long as you were sticking with it, and, you know, when you, after making some bad decisions and getting over those, like, you know, yeah. you, you keep it moving, you move on. But I feel like trying to change the brand name, change the identity, it's like that. that's where things kind of just kind of fell off a little bit more. Like, yeah. just get back to basics. That's all you got. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a failed rebrand. No. But, yeah, it wasn't a failure. But you, you just, had to be like faithful. If you yeah. was if you should be watching still. Yeah. Which like I I just started tapping in about three, four years ago. Again. I told you I stopped watching for a whole decade. So uh I'm I'm good to it's good to see TNA back, is all I'm saying. And uh they, they're coming back. Uh first pay per view, uh Hard to Kill in 2024 in January, uh from Palms Resort Casino in Las Vegas. So I'll try to be there for that one. For the, the, the yeah. first the first TNA show in seven years, eight years, I gotta be there for that. I'll be fine. I'm gonna have to come through. Y'all oh, gonna yeah, have to man. get uh young kings wrestling that uh exclusive access, you know? Man, listen. I'm gonna have to, have to make some uh, some calls and send some emails and DMs out. See what's going right. on. Right. Speaking Not of a uh, TNA impact, uh another former talent. At TNA was uh, reportedly backstage at the tapings after Bound for Glory. Uh, the birthday boy, Mr. CM Punk, <laughs> apparently was there. Oh man! So now they starting to CM Punk the TNA rumors. Here we go. And honestly, if he don't show up back in WWE, that might be the next best move. That's yeah. going to be what. What he hoped to accomplish in AEW, he can accomplish it there and they'll respect it. Like, Scott Demore is not no dummy. Yeah. Like, Scott Demore actually know what he's doing. And he's done his best the last, like, couple years since he's really been, like, the the head honcho there to turn his shit around. Shout out to TNA Impact Wrestling, man. Facts. Who would have thought Steve Harvey get some equity in that company and now we just <laughs> that's who need to show up at, at Hard to Kill in Vegas. Man. Has Steve Harvey host. Yeah, I'm a I'm a bug out. I'm a bug out if I see Steve Harvey on TNA. Now y'all ain't know I was in the wrestling business. <laughs> survey says. That the episode title survey says. Mm. It might be. It might be. Let's, let's see. Let's see how the rest of the episode goes. I will say, yeah, we're going to play it by ear a little bit. Uh, but Will Ospreay is uh, another guy who's uh, been linked to Impact. He's also been uh, linked to AEW. 
and apparently he's supposedly interested in WWE as well. Is he uh, is he bluffing? Yeah, I don't buy it. I don't buy it till I see it. He's trying to get that payday. He said, hey, Tony. Hold on, hold on. This is what he said. Tony Broth. Going to <laughs> WWE Broth. Right. Tony said, oh, no, you can't do that. That's how you get a check. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. Play that game. Uh, somebody else is a free agent, right? Um, Sammy. Sammy Callahan. Uh, see, I see. I I totally failed with the uh, the transition here to the next topic. My bad. I didn't <laughs> clue you in. Oh, players fuck up. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. That's that 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 that's me. Uh, <laughs> apparently, Ronda Rousey is a free agent. Uh, they uh, she done somebody done promoted that she could be showing up to. Let me see what this is. So she she popped up at. Lucha Von Vavoom Vavoom in LA, him. out in LA. Uh, Marina Shafir was there. She, that she Brian she, Kendrick she, school, I think so. Uh, yeah, she pulled up with Marina Shafir, and they was taking on uh, Ty Valkyrie and uh, Brian Kendrick. Mm. Okay, but yeah, they nice. on, on the on the website they moved her to the alumni section, so it's it's looking uh-huh. like she gone. Oh, WWE? Yeah. Mm. Grand opening, grand close. Facts. I'm trying to find out who owns Lucha Vavoom. Like, it's Googleable, but like Google is not really bringing up no answers for me right now. So let hey. me try to find this out right quick. Because I think it might be Taya's school, actually. I had never heard of it until this story. So I'm like, yeah. Uh, Taya Valkyrie is the very first person you see when you pull up the roster, so I'm, I'm assuming it's her school. Hmm. I mean, that's some, cool. Yeah, they got a couple names on here. Uh, people know Ray Phoenix is over there, too. Okay. Who else is on this roster, man? Apparently, it's a burlesque promotion, too. So, really? Okay. So the yeah, the rest of the names I'm seeing on this list aren't familiar to me, uh, aside from Ray Phoenix and Penta. Yeah. Oh. Shout out to that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, it's it's a lot of other names I don't know, so I'm gonna just move on. But Maybe. shout out to uh, Lucha <laughs> Vavoom, and uh, now that Ronda's a free agent, where's she gonna go? I, oh, I, man. for negativity purposes, bro, I need her in AEW. No, <laughs> oh, come on, bro. Yo, if Ronda, if Ronda hated the fans when she was in WWE, man, Oof. she might Oof. just be, she might just need to be like that, that fumigation spray that we need in this, in this whole fandom. So I promise you, company. I promise you. So you're gonna see her shoot on somebody if she goes there at some point in time. It's going on live happen. TV. Yes. Listen, if y'all promote a Ronda Rousey match on AEW, I will I will watch Dynamite. I will watch Collision. <laughs> Cause there is a high guarantee she gonna shoot on somebody. Yeah. That's that's either fucking up or somebody that she is eventually gonna to come to have beef with in that yeah. company. It be, it's gonna it, happen. It's so quick. It's not even going to be funny, bro. And uh, elsewhere, I'm a, let, me, let me reel this one in, fam. We can say this. <laughs> let me reel this one in. Uh, because we talking about uh, former champions in WWE potentially debuting in AEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to just go back to last week. October 19th, I'm assuming that was a Wednesday, right? I think so. Yes, it was. October 19th was last, not this past Wednesday, but the Wednesday before that. Uh, Sting came out Thursday, there. Thursday, my bad. Okay, October 18th. Uh, October 19th is, is when this happened. This other thing happened that I'm about to yeah, talk yeah. about. October 18th, Sting announced that uh, he was going to retire at Revolution yeah. in March. Generally, <laughs> they hold Revolution in March. Uh, so... 
they said he's uh, potentially going to retire. Uh, not potentially, he is going to retire. Yep. So the next day, October 19th, somebody asked who Sting's last opponent should be. <laughs> and yep. I'm very upset that I didn't say this on the episode last week because I, I went to go look for the sound bite because I was going to play it. I didn't say it on the episode, but I definitely tweeted as a troll that Sting's last opponent, they should run back that uh, that Monday Nitro Swan song from 2001. The very last match to ever Ooh. take place in WCW was Sting versus ooh, Ric Flair. Man. I just said that as a joke. <laughs> but you know they be tapped in. They always run. And uh, it took less than a week after that for Ric Flair to show up in AEW. I swear I thought they was joking. Like I, 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 I seen somebody post it. First I seen somebody post it on Facebook. I'm like, oh, that's, that's 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 some some Photoshop shit. We AI in out here. That nah, ain't nothing. And then I heard people saying it like, oh, Rick really showed. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, man. No, listen, I. I can't, I can't even tell you who I saw. I, I think I seen like rumblings of it on Twitter. But then I went to the group chat. Yeah. I went, to, I went to the group DM. And this is like shortly after I seen Eric Bischoff also make the same joke I made about how Ric Flair should be his last opponent. And then I see Katie in the group chat is like, Ric Flair just debuted. I was like, you got to be fucking Man. kidding me. Oh. I don't even, I didn't even watch the promo. I have no idea what Ric Flair did. I just know he was there. Yeah. What did he yeah, do? Me I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm going to find out. <laughs> My name been it. I ain't in it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I did hear that he's going to be around through full gear. So this ain't, this ain't a one and done. Like, he's going to be around on TV. Yeah. Like full full gear is what November, and then he said they said he gonna be there till March. Oh my god! Which is when Sting gonna retire. All I'm saying. <laughs> so <laughs> that that's looking like that's the trajectory that we going on right now. So aside from Sting, should Ric Flair have other matches? Who should he face in AEW aside from Sting? If he gonna be there a while, y'all might as well let him have a couple more matches too. Oh my god. Get your money's worth. <laughs> you know who I want to see Ric Flair face? Who? Luchasaurus. What? Oh, you... a dinosaur right. civil war? You trying to? <laughs> that wouldn't be fire. <laughs> you trying to see that man die for real? A, a dinosaur civil war? That was the joke. You, <laughs> you trying? <laughs> that was the, that was the punchline. <laughs> I wasn't serious. But you know oh, what? They man. tapped in. I, I, I might have to tell y'all I ain't serious. I didn't say that on Twitter, and now he showed up. They cut uh, the check. Nah, nah, you trying to see that man die for real? That's 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 what this is. Hey, Ric Flair and AEW will absolve him of all debt. <laughs> <laughs> you know he getting whatever he need. Oh man, to the exact dollar. Yes. He hey. said, "How much money do you owe your creditors, Rick?" <laughs> Told that do something. He said, "How much do you want? Let me let you know." <laughs> and called every last one of them. Like, right. how much owe you? How much owe you? Hey, how much I need? <laughs> Man, call, much call, I need call his right medical. Here. Call his whoever got his medical bills. Mm-hmm. Ric Flair probably got mad shit in collections at this point. Man, <laughs> he know he do though. He don't even got to contact the actual creditors no more. That shit in collections. For sure. <laughs> uh, one last tidbit, man. Uh, let's talk about this one. Uh, Bash in Berlin. You got any uh, news on that? What's that about? Okay. Yeah, so Bash in Berlin. That's set to take place next summer. I August. Yeah. August. After August. After SummerSlam. Yeah. So uh, that... Uh, that First that PLE in Germany. Right. That that uh 
and let a lot of people talking about the possibility that you know what by that time maybe just maybe certain somebody might be a world champion Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying if y'all smart if you know you know yes sir yes sir but uh that wasn't the only thing i seen but because uh just a little while after that apparently uh internally it's listed the uh the site of next year's backlash is paris france in 2024 It was a reportedly slated, uh, excuse me, a reportedly by them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're, they're slated for, for backlash. But listen, as a kid, I was, ever since Rugrats in Paris, I've been a, a stan of Paris. Hopefully they get the bed bug situation under control by the time my favorite wrestlers got to go there. Right. But uh, Play around with that, man. Yeah, Paris, is that'd be one of the, listen. I'm gonna stand for for Parisian culture, French oh, culture. Um, I love croissants. <laughs> I, I mess with crepes. I took three years of French in high school, in middle school. Wee oui, mm-hmm. wee. Oui. Je ne sais pas. Yeah, yeah. All that good stuff. I'm, bon I'm bon. curious to see what that what the, that fan base is gonna look like over there too. There's gonna be a lot of niggas in the crowd, I tell you that much. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Hey, so whenever backlash is, I need to know. Cause if y'all do backlash in like May, June, something like that, you gotta have Omas versus Victor Wimbenyama. Like a face off. Man, what <laughs> not, not a match, but just a face off. Like just had him come face to face. Oh no. Is any French wrestlers on the roster that we know about? Present day? Not that I know. Now I'm confused. Like, were there any French wrestlers in the past? There was a couple. Rene Dupree. He Canadian. He French Canadian. He don't uh, care. Uh, I guess, yeah. Like, like French French. Uh, Wait, was Rene Dupree... Now I don't think of, was he actually from France? It's Googleable. No, he's Canadian. He's Canadian. I'm gonna say he was in the group. Yeah. Cause they, they were they were built from France at first. And then mm-hmm. they just started just going with the Canadian. Yeah. Like him and so they, so they all French Canadian then. Yeah. Cause... I mean, we got some French Canadians on the roster we know about. Yeah, there's a bunch. Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Sammy, Mar- Maurice at one point. Maurice, that might be your your, your time where Sammy Zayn might can win his first world championship in Patty. <laughs> hey man, go for it. We talking about it? Have him win it. Have him go to Germany. <laughs> Get his ass cooked. <laughs> like you know who? <laughs> Yo, that's smart though. That's Listen. smart. Though. Hey, cut the check, Paul. Hey, Nick. Ari, whoever cutting the checks over there now. Do that. Y'all listening anyway, you might as well. Right. Uh where, where else should WWE go in 2024? All right, we know they uh we know oh. they in Tampa. For now, we got Tampa, uh Philly, and uh Berlin. And apparently Paris is on the, the roster for that too. Yeah. Uh Vegas. <clears throat> that's all I'm saying. Not for a PLE. Say. I'm not saying what. Oh, speaking of, and uh, this 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 one ain't too big because y'all y'all had this recently, but uh, SummerSlam got a front runner, <laughs> front runner I, for I next year. That. It's Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Who the fuck want to spend a summer vacation in Cleveland? <laughs> Hold on, let me get on my Joe Kim Noah right quick. Uh oh, I ain't never heard nobody say they want to go to Cleveland for a vacation. What's so special about Cleveland? Legendary ring. Um, yeah. Because I agree. Being from Omaha, Nebraska, who want to go to Cleveland? SummerSlam. Y'all can go to Cleveland for like fast lane or payback yeah. or something. Right. For a big five, though? Nah, bro. Nah, I'm not interested. Big fives need to be in big cities. And this is an issue that I, I brought up on Twitter. 
during the season premieres of SmackDown and Raw. Y'all did the season premieres for both shows in Oklahoma. That was like, come on, bro. That's that's kind of stupid. <laughs> big episodes of shows need to be in big cities. That should be customary. That should be the standard. Like that's a that's a MSG or a state. Yeah, Wars, Barclays, crypto, whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. It's just... Like the first episode of SmackDown on Fox was at Staples Center. Right. The second episode was in Las Vegas at T-Mobile. Like, and that go. was the draft. Those are two big episodes back to back in big cities. Right. Like, I think a year ago the season premiere of Raw was at Barclays. Was it, like, come on, fam. That's what we need to be to in be. big cities for these shows. Big right. PLEs, the big PLEs need to be in big cities. So like Tampa, that's that's a big city. Mm-hmm. Philly, that's a big city. If you have a if you have an NFL team in your city, they need to be hosting a PLE. Yeah, that, that's that should be the rule. Mm-hmm. If you have an NBA team in your city, you need to be hosting a, a a big episode, a special episode of Raw or SmackDown. Right, that should be the standard, in my opinion. And that, that's just my way to angle for Las Vegas to get a big show more often. <laughs> and you know what's even more egregious? I talk about Vegas not getting a big show mm-hmm. all the time. My hometown ain't had a pay-per-view in over 15 years. Damn, really? Judgment Day 2008 was the last time Omaha had a pay-per-view. Damn. Which was the first pay-per-view we had in Omaha for 12 years at that point. In your house. Seven, I think. Seven or six. It wasn't six. It was seven. Yeah, y'all, y'all was tripping. That's Give deep. Omaha a PLE next year first. Give Omaha like fast lane, payback, one of them small joints. Yeah. Yeah, nobody's gonna care. Rules. Yeah. But next year, we need Vegas to get something. Apparently, Cleveland's getting SummerSlam. So Vegas, can we get Survivor Series? At least. Well, where are they gonna have that at? With the Browns play, I guess. That's nasty, bro. Like we we don't we don't care about that. That's gross. I know the Jets not about to lose to the goddamn Giants, man. Oh, y'all tough. That's tough. That's crazy. Oh, we okay. We about to tie. Okay, we going to overtime. <laughs> yeah, take a breather. <laughs> they they. I tell you, they about to stress me out, man. Listen, about to I don't be stressed out over football no more. My team trash. I'm good. <laughs> y'all showed me who y'all were in like week two. <laughs> That's crazy. I can rest easy. Uh, but uh, I think I started thinking of other cities that like haven't had like big pay per views in a while. When the last time Seattle had a big pay per view? It's been twenty years. Since they had say, WrestleMania nineteen. Mania? That's it. Yeah. Oh, dog. So I, that's my candidate for next year's Royal Rumble. Right. Twenty twenty five had that shit at Safeco Field. It got a retractable roof. Mm-hmm. So whatever elements that uh happened in Seattle in January, y'all don't got to worry about it. So I'm saying, do it really be raining like that in Seattle? I think so. Like on the regular, I I ain't never been to Seattle, but like, I from people that live there, they say uh, it's a lot of seasonal depression that takes place. Mm. Yeah, I could imagine. I ain't surprised mm. by that. So let us get uh, Rumble 25 in Seattle, Survivor Series 24 in Vegas. Do that. Or if y'all want to get you know WrestleMania. WrestleMania 41 in Vegas, y'all can do that too. That's what I'm saying, man. I ain't gonna stop y'all. Let's get some. Let's get some. I, I, I look for an excuse to go back out to Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for so. sure. For sure. Uh, let's talk about what we was watching this past week. Uh, I turned on uh, this random playlist on Peacock. I seen a bunch of uh, you know, a bunch of like the scary characters in the history of wrestling. Yeah, I, I peeped that. Yeah, so we had a, they had like the Chamber of Horrors from like Halloween Havoc, nineteen eighty something. I didn't check, but yeah, we had a, had some names in there though. We had Vader, Abdullah the Butcher, Cactus Jack, was in there, back when he wore the the leopard leotard. <laughs> Jim Ross was on commentary. Shit. It's WCW. Jim Ross was calling the match, and I, I was like, oh shit. Okay. 
That's crazy. But uh, I mean, you can't have a a scary a, a scary hours playlist without more Mick Foley. So we had a Mankind versus Undertaker buried alive match. We had a Kane versus Triple H casket match on Raw was on that playlist. Oh. For, uh, the very famous Shawn Michaels dancing on the casket. Yeah. Movie. yeah. <laughs> we still get mileage off of that shit. Hell yeah. I plan on using it uh, soon. Uh-oh. It's, uh oh. It's a certain. It's a certain uh, football team that plays in the conference that uh, our team plays in. Our our two teams play in the same conference oh, and uh Jesus. might be getting that death penalty, so it might be another casket to <laughs> dance on top. <laughs> I plan on using it some. Man. Uh, also, on. other thing on this playlist, a very, very trash moment in wrestling history. I didn't have a problem with it per se, but it was kind of trash. Uh the Miz versus Damian Priest in in that zombie um, match. Yeah. 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 I don't know what, like I, I get it. You, you got sponsors. You got to make yeah. your money. You, you didn't have. He was to able do to get like away with that. doing it in the Thunderdome too. Right. That's the Dude. only reason that this went over. Because like you could have did yeah. some backstage shit. You know what I'm saying? You could have kept it outside the ring instead of doing this. Shit. Right. And then the only time Miz ever got hurt to to to, to compile on top of it. That's the only time right. he ever had a real injury. Like just bad on top of bad. I remember they say he tore his ACL. Mm-hmm. So this man stayed yeah, in the wheelchair like, for like a month. <laughs> yeah, like it wasn't even that bad. Come on, son. Because he was back by that what December, something like that. Because I remember he. No, that match was. It, it wasn't an ACL, but he was he was out for like a few months. Yeah, but it wasn't like, probably, like no ACL tear. Like I think he probably sprained line. something or whatever. But because what like just a couple weeks late? No, not a couple weeks. Like. By October, he was uh taking money in the bank off of Otis. Yeah. So he it's was like, cool. yeah, he was exactly. Cool. Uh, what you watched this past week? Oh, man. I, I cut on, I still got it on too. It's a long ass show, The Greatest Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. I, I forgot this show was five hours, bro. Like, what did you need a 50 minute, 50 man rumble for? <laughs> like, for the spectacle. Like that is just too much, bro. But the, uh, I mean the, it, it, I guess it was worth it for the tightest world slide. Like that was, facts. That, that was real life comedy. <laughs> hey, Brian Danielson didn't wrestle for like two years, and he went to wrestle in Saudi Arabia, out there in the oh. desert, open stadium. He was in that ring for a good hour plus, and his chest exhausted. was like. His chest was some damn burger meat. Like, yeah, <laughs> they was going ham on him for no reason. <laughs> hey, let's. It, it, Brian Danielson was in there. He started from number one. He was in there over an hour. Mm-hmm. I think he. I think he's lasted the longest ever in a Royal Rumble. But yeah. uh, yeah, we, we had some names in here. Like Mark Henry popped up at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Yep. <laughs> Uh, this, this big ass like Japanese sumo wrestler was there for whatever reason. Nobody knew who the fuck he was. Uh, Hornswoggle showed up. Yeah, fucking Roderick Strong was there from <laughs> NXT. Gabakato from NXT was there, and the Great Khali showed up too. Yeah, well, she was we had to what? debut a Mansoor, the Saudi taker. <laughs> showed up for the first time. Yeah, man. That first show was a spectacle. It was a it spectacle. Was. It was. It wasn't canon, but nah. They canon now. That's all that matters. Right. Uh they one more thing I forgot out. from this playlist though. Uh they show when uh the boogeyman bit off Jillian's little thing on oh, the side. Oh, I'll of- never forget when I saw that, man. That shit was oh. nasty as hell. He ate that shit it like really a cookie. Was. Right. And so I was like, I started thinking, hey, yo, Jillian Hall. What happened to that boy? I went to YouTube. Uh, not YouTube, what? I went to Instagram. Yeah. I found out Jillian Hall married to a black dude. Oh, yeah. I found that out a while ago. With a kid. Oh, I was like, I was, okay. What? 
<laughs> okay, brother. Yeah. My man was watching SmackDown in 06. was like, I need some of that. Mm-hmm. Rubbing his hands. like. I mean, look, I said that too. I'm like, yo, I don't know what's going on with the shit on her face, but if you take that out the equation, like. Yeah. Okay. That thing made her ugly as hell. Yeah. So nah. it did his job. It did his job. And, and the way and the way they had it with Boogeyman doing all that shit, I was like, oh. Yeah. Boogeyman was a nasty ass nigga. Right. <laughs> this nigga le- legit was eating worms, bro. That's what I'm saying. And it's like, he didn't have to do no chewing because he didn't really have a lot of teeth. Yeah, so he didn't have like, no teeth. He was just raw dogging them shits. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, my man's was committed to the gimmick, man. He had no teeth. He ate worms. He broke the clock over his hair. Legit. Yo. 30. That man was crazy. Yo, I was about to say, like, he lying about his age, too. <laughs> At that point, it's like, I ain't worried about you lying, because you going to... If lying is the, 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 the one hey, thing, listen. the least thing you're going to do <laughs> for this job... Him lying about his age actually worked in his favor. Cause that showed him he was committed and he would do whatever it took. Mm-hmm. And the boogeyman just showed that you know more past that too. My yeah. man's was on the bump a couple weeks ago too, so like he's still involved with WWE. He was at SmackDown about a month ago. Mm-hmm. Like he, he still be around. So shout out to my dude Marty Wright. Right. Uh, we both watched uh, yesterday. Former uh, celebrity appearance in WWE mm-hmm. Tyson Fury. Hmm. The uh, lineal world heavyweight champion versus a former UFC heavyweight champion, Francis Ngannou. Oh boy, to and uh, UFC, UFC and WWE at this point are are the same damn company. So yeah. we'll talk about UFC a lot more on here. We talked about uh, Brock Lesnar last week, but let's talk about Fury and Ngannou for a couple minutes, man. Uh, Listen, going into the fight, I was expecting Francis to get, you know, gassed a little bit in the middle mm-hmm. of the, in the middle of the fight, and then Tyson, you know, saying, hit him with man. that little TKO. Right. Uh, but nah, Francis looked way better than I thought because uh, a lot of that was was due to Fury looking a little unprepared coming into the fight. Like, mm-hmm. This man was talking like it was going to be a cakewalk, like you know, Francis, he, he looked like a deer in headlights. Like, <laughs> okay. Francis is like, I ain't never. made a post out of your ass. <laughs> yeah. Laid his ass on the ground. The only knockdown in the fight. Mm-hmm. The odds was like plus 4,000. You can't, you can't tell me he ain't win that fight, though. No, he, he won that shit. And, I'm mad I, mean, I didn't bet on a knockdown. So I'm saying, and, and Tyson throwing elbows and shit. They acting like they don't see that. He dirty as hell. Like, hey, Francis got a chin on him, though. He took that elbow like it was woo! nothing. I mean, he, he, you know, he probably he used to that type of shit, so I ain't mad right. at it. But yeah, man, they you seen they, uh, they did him dirty. You seen Usyk was looking nervous at ringside every time they showed him. He was like, "Damn, this payday slipping away." <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> he said, up there like, yo, what am I doing here now?" And I see earlier Tyson was, and then they they pulled out of the uh, the date for December twenty third. Oh shit. So you know what's about to happen. Woo! And they call that a split decision. I, everybody, everybody and their mama thought Francis won that shit. Right. They, they just didn't want the black man to do nothing, man. They, they never did. like to see us win. Never like to see us win. Never. Never. That unapologetic never. African beat that man's ass. That's all I got to say. A real African. Mm-hmm. Like born in Africa in an African country. Yeah. Doing hard labor before puberty African. That's how African yeah. that man is. Right. <laughs> Real talk. So shout out to him. Uh I would like to see him in some more fights, man. Like, yeah. That's his boxing debut. He was looking decent. He that whole heavyweight division old as fuck. So like he fit in seamlessly. <laughs> Oh, look, he over in PFL, too. So I'm uh, might have to Facts. use some credentials, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, for sure. Talk to some people. For sure. We're going to see what that's out. Next uh, next Vegas show. We need to be in there, man. Yeah, man. We're going to talk more MMA on this show. We need to be in there. Facts. Let's get it. Uh, well, let's, let's, uh, Before we get into talking about Halloween Havoc and Crown Jewel, 
Uh, let's talk about a uh, peasant of the week, man. Okay. We gotta do peasant of the week every well, single. Packing the edges, guess what? These peasants, you peasants. And I had me some candidates this week, boy. Uh oh. <laughs> and I, I had to settle for just one. Like I was looking at my list, I was like, I can get this a Dwight Howard. But man. I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> A lot of AO going on there. Uh, Sheesh. Cameron and Mace took care of that for me. Um, oh, I know they did. <laughs> I know they did. <laughs> appropriately. So I was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. So I was just like, you know, I like free stuff, though. Mm-hmm. I love free stuff. Like, if I, if I don't got to pay for nothing, I enjoy it. That's the way, like, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if I can't get something for free, I'll settle for a discount. You know what I mean? Uh, with that being said, wreak havoc, bring that ass here, boy. Bring that ass here, <laughs> yo. That's crazy. <laughs> we got a repeat offender on our hands, man. yo. Oh, I had to get my man. lick back. That's crazy. <laughs> my man's gave me peasant of the week three months ago. <laughs> And I've just been waiting for the right time. Dog. So I remember, I remember like, you know, your boy Josh <laughs> was talking about something that happened at, at, at you know, the, the event that happened at y'all school. Yeah. There was no elaborating on that. So I was like, dang, I was going to get you for that if I found out. <laughs> so I was like, dang. So I had to wait. And I waited patiently. So I'm going to tell y'all why I'm giving wreak havoc. This of the week this week. <laughs> this man came into the group <laughs> chat. Yeah. This past week, this past Friday, to inform all of us about a flash sale on the WWE shop website. This man said, and I quote, they selling belts for $22 on the shop. <laughs> Just for a limited time, though. And then proceeded to paste a very fake looking link <laughs> after that. And then he disappeared. Oh, man. And so everybody else is like, what? That's a deal. Where is that? We don't see nothing. I went to the shop. I ain't see no sales for $22 on belts. <laughs> Only sale I saw was 30% off of the whole entire website. So. <sighs> I was just like, dang, it must be over. I must have missed it because I, I seen the message like a couple hours after he talked about it. So I was like, dang, he said, said it was for a limited time. I must have missed it. And I moved on with my day. I was like, hey, yes. I, I can't cry over spilled milk. Just got to clean it up and throw it away and go on with my day. Uh, so further research, because everybody else was like, Rick, what the fuck you talking about? You sent this fake link that took us to this, this boutique website. They were selling dresses. <laughs> Shout out to my man's SES Vince. <laughs> yeah. For for going further with the research and uh, giving me a reason to give this peasant of the week. I <laughs> even invited Vince on the episode so he could be here. What? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him why I was inviting him. I just say, hey Vince, you want to come on the show? <laughs> oh, that's wild. <laughs> Uh, further research uh, determined this was a, a confirmation of a fake ad. And uh, my man's reek was about to get us caught in a fishing scam. <laughs> oh, we too old to be getting caught in fishing scams, fam. Our generation invented fishing scams. <laughs> I was doing recon, man. <laughs> Not cool. He posted a link and everything. You was trying to get us caught up. <laughs> Hey, look, I, I I ain't put no info in the system, so so we good. Hey, if you oh. clicked on the link, brother, <laughs> I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> oh shit, man! They got what they need already. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't have to give them nothing. They got it already. Oh. Better clear them cash and cookies out your browser. Yeah, I'm about to. Oh, man. I had to do it, bro. I had to get Ooh. my lick back. 
Man, that's cold blooded. Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's back of my, uh, when I came out too, I was like, damn, I'm sitting up there like this nigga gonna get me. <laughs> like, <laughs> after that whole shit was over, I'm like, damn, I hope this nigga forget by Sunday, cause <laughs> Bro, I, d- I did not forget. <laughs> I I was already in the process of giving you peasants before we had the additional research. <laughs> 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 the other shit was just icing on the cake. Cake already came out the oven. <laughs> oh, yes, man. Man. that's what we do here, man. Oh, once you hear you gotta rib each other jokes. sometimes, man. Once you hear him start, you know it's over for you. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> hey, but uh, oh. let's get into Halloween Havoc Night One and talk about Night Two a little bit as well. Uh, Night One, it was it was it was a good ass show. Like hell yeah, better than I thought. Five women's matches. Mm-hmm. We talked about Lyra Valkyria beating Becky Lynch for the for the women's title, but like, I mean, we had Roxanne Perez and Kiana James in a Devil's Playground match. Mm-hmm. Had a uh, Kalani Jordan beat Ariana Grace uh, to move on to the finals of the women's breakout tournament, as well as Lola Vice, Lola Vice and Kalani Jordan. That's uh kind of what I wanted to to be the final. You know, we're going for Kalani Jordan though. For sure. Going for the system. For sure. Going for the yeah, system. Man. Yeah, man. We got uh, Lexus King made his debut. Uh, great presentation. Yo, swag points to my guy for that, that entrance. I got to give it on to the him. throne. Listen. Yeah, right. Like Lexus King man. came out on the throne. Yo. Shout out to my boy. Shout out to my boy. Uh, Chase you. Wins the tag team championships off of the family, the D'Angelo family. Mm-hmm. I was out. Listen, Duke Hudson and uh, Chase U, Chase University, Andre Chase. They made it through the storm, man. They did. And Roman rates about to go crazy. <laughs> I might have survived the transfer portal too. Yeah. And your boy Tony D as a champion. At this point, so all right, RIP to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gigi Dolan, she ain't she ain't looking too hot right now. Man. Nah, I don't know what's good with that, but stop dropping. Yeah, it's it's tripping. They uh, it's okay, they had a literal lights out match versus Blair Davenport. Like it was a literal lights out match. I know, like in AEW, they had a lights out match where it's just like an unsanctioned match. Yeah. They do. I I hate to say it, but they do it better. Yeah, because that's what I was expecting from this. Like, yeah, I was expecting them to just have an unsanctioned match, and they just. It, I mean, it's real beef between the two. So, no, nah, they legit just turn the lights off. <laughs> like, I was like, all right, fam, come on now. That ain't that ain't it. <laughs> nah, but uh, we got night two coming up on Halloween. Halloween havoc on Halloween. Uh. Dare I say, uh, Shotzi and Scarlett, y'all are good hosts. Oh, always. I, I, I dug the costumes. Uh, I'm not the biggest Shotzi fan. Because mm-hmm. you know why? I, I figured it out, too. Shotzi reminds me of those people who make Halloween their entire personality as soon as Labor Day is over with. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I realized, I was like, God, that's what it was. Mm. So, yeah. But no, they, they had... Like new costumes every time we saw them, that was fire. So yeah, yeah, no, nah, like Shotzi, Scarlet. I mean, at least Shotzi. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like Scarlet be like, killing I, that role. I don't think Scarlet has done enough in the in the eyes of the fans to really warrant just being put as a host for us to care about her hosting. Mm-hmm. But like a lot of people care about Shotzi. She's been on TV enough and, and done enough to where yeah. like she has that fan support at least. Like Scarlet don't get the fan support because. Niggas don't really care about her or Cross. Like Which is damn shame. Yeah, I, I like them, but like niggas in general don't really care. So like that's what confused me why she was hosting. But it's whatever. It's whatever. It's all good. But let's talk about night two, man. Of course, we got the the breakout uh, tournament final: Kalani Jordan, Lola Vice. Let's go, Kalani. Yes, sir. Uh, Mister Robert Stone versus Braun Breaker. Boy, uh, you stupid. Yeah, you tripping, fam. 
which uh, you know, more than likely going to get the return of Von Wagner here. They 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 fake made me care. So just continue to make me I, care afterwards. I still don't. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. You got to make me care now that he's back. Right. And that is a that's the challenge. Like you can make me care with video packages if I pay attention to them. And I definitely didn't care about the first few weeks y'all did them. Yeah, right. But after a while, I got some. I was like, okay. Uh, next, uh, we got a table ladders and scares match. Cree Brothers versus uh, Los Lotharios. I don't think they're Los Lotharios anymore. But uh, Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo. That's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Those four of my favorite wrestlers on the roster. And you involve, you know, you involve weapons. I love it. It's going to be uh, match of the night candidate. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I don't think it's going to be match of the night, but it's definitely going to be candidate. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be candidate. For sure. Y'all know what match of the night going to be. We'll get to it in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, before the North American Championship, Dirty Dom Mysterio versus Nathan Frazier. And I think Dom is uh, putting the belt on the line on Monday. I know Dom wrestling on Monday. I don't, it might be non-title, but Nathan Frazier we know going to be there on, on Raw. So Right. And uh, when we do that, I'm going to need Nathan Frazier to have another interaction with the world heavyweight champion who trained him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do that. that uh, for the fact. women's, yeah, for the women's tag team championships, uh, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven versus uh, Chase University. You know, Chase University got the men's tag titles. They can get the women's tag titles, too. Thea yeah, Hill and JC well. Jane. Let's do that. It's like when Florida won the uh the football championship and the basketball championship in the same year. <laughs> mm-hmm. We can do that. Yo. We got a uh, Tiffany Stratton versus Fallon Henley. That's gonna be a good one. Shout out to Fallon Henley. Uh cosplaying as Tiffany Stratton a lot better than her. That was funny as shit. It was funny as hell. <laughs> And then uh, the main event for the NXT Championship, Ilya Dragunov versus Carmelo Hayes. That's the match of the night, number three. Yeah. Both of their first two matches already on my match of the year list. So, oh, shit, yeah. It's going to be a good one. Uh, we're going to find out who attacked Trick Williams after this? <sighs> probably, yeah, probably. After. I was going to say maybe before, but nah. This is definitely going to be after this. Right after this. Yeah. And, uh... I think we all leaning towards Carmelo Hayes, man, but I seen a little something, something that uh might have implicated Wes Lee. Oh man. I done totally remember forgot. A few, remember a few weeks back when, when Melo and Trick was in the locker room talking and Wes Lee was just like Yeah, he just fiddle, took fiddling around the, the locker room, just like acting like he was getting shit. Took the ball. He was just home. listening to that convo. Right. We ain't seen Wes Lee since Trick got attacked. Damn. Before that, yeah, said it might be him, man. We might be a little, little bit too hard on Mellow Pause. Yeah, no, that that, that that's true. We we might be falling for it because that's the obvious book. See, that'd be yeah. some smart shit though. That'd be smart. Yeah, because Shawn Michaels, you know, Shawn Michaels just like, well, they're gonna think back when Hunter turned on me. Yeah, and that's exactly what we did. Did <laughs> we did exactly that? But it's like the the way they set it up, because like my guy with the, the facial expressions and everything like that, Braun getting on his ear about it. And mm-hmm. He was up here looking like, yo, bro, I'm trying to get my belt back and you stepping on into the picture. Like then all them pause, the, the, the moments where Trick got his back turned and Melo getting right like he about to square up or something like, yo, what's going on, fam? Red herrings is crazy. Yeah, they, they get me. I love they it. get me. So that's oh, gonna be a good night. Hold up, red alert, red alert. What up? What up? What we got? So Monday Night Raw, uh Chad Gable issued the open challenge. The Alpha Academy issued the open challenge. You know who answered that challenge? The Cree Brothers. We getting the Cree Brothers oh, versus Alpha Academy oh, on Monday Night Raw. Oh, oh. Okay. 
Okay. Man. Okay. That's how you that's how you get me to not watch the bum ass Raiders. That's how you do it. <laughs> like, that's how you do it. Hey. It feels so good. This, this is genuine real reactions right now. We just seen this. This this better open or close the show because I, I I need this front and center somewhere on the show. Like I at least need it in the first hour. Like I just I just caught this right now. Like Hey, yo, shout out to Triple H, man. Man. Because cause Monday Night Raw ain't been hitting for me since football started back up. Yeah, man. This is how you do that. Dog. Hold on. I think I, I think I asked for this, like, a few months ago, too. I'm going to go check my archives. I think so. I could have sworn I did. I don't know how to find it, though. I don't know what I what I asked for or none of that. Man. Yo. Shout out to my man Julius Creed. I need Julius Creed to, to do a, a, a vertical suplex on Otis big ass. Right. And just hold him there for 15 seconds. Oh man. Hey yo. They're getting, they getting the rocket. I love it. And leave them on Raw too. They need to stay there. Right. Like they can, they do that match on Halloween Havoc, and then that's it. Send them boys up where they need to be. I I, I feel like I I I manifested this. I just can't find out how I asked. For it. <laughs> yeah, man. That's nah, what's I up, can't. Though. I can't find it, dog. It's fire. I swear, I asked for it though. Facts. Damn. Okay. Okay, Ooh. let's get back to the show. <laughs> Fire flames. Fire Damn. flames out here. Okay, I'll make sure I I'm gonna make sure I, I can't miss that. Nah. Whatever I'm doing at the time, I'm stopping. That's my CT. Giving them full undivided attention. Let's go. Uh, let's talk about Crown Jewel. We got seven matches announced so far. I think uh I think that's it, actually. You don't need more than seven. We got five title matches on this show gonna be a good time but let's uh let's start it off with the question reek <laughs> how many royal families does wrestling have man i heard through the grapevine that wrestling has more than one royal family indeed they do and uh one of those royal family members the american nightmare cody rhodes is facing off with senor the narrow and el banco damian priest who you got in this one? Uh, this is this, this Cody's first time going to Saudi. It, Cody got to get a win, man. Is it his first he, time? Yeah. He wasn't at the last sure. I don't think so. It's Googleable. Because that I think it was when he was injured still. Nah. He wasn't hurt. He faced Brock. Yeah. Oh, Not the champions. Shoot. Yo, I I never forgot about that. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So, damn, I don't know. Well, he lost that. Yeah, he lost though. So yeah, so so same thing. He got to get a win. He got to get a win here. It ain't it ain't yeah. gonna hurt Priest. Nah. In fact, it's probably just gonna you know fuel the whole speculation that he's gonna cash in later on the show. Mm-hmm. And that's that's always a possibility still. Mm-hmm. Like they pump faked us at the last show, but this is Saudi we talking about. Yeah, man. Saudi always do big things. That's say they, and they, I don't think they've had nothing like that happen at Saudi yet. Nah, ain't been no cash ins. Nah. So, hmm, we're gonna see. We're gonna find out. Yeah. Uh, next up, the greatest of all time, John Cena versus Solo Sokoa, and this is a. That, that good John Cena versus Umaga energy. Uh, mm-hmm. Real quick for the one time. <laughs> Who you got in this one? Oh, you know, I've been back and forth on this a lot because uh, the odds are close. Like he playing up this whole, you know, that that like Retiring. that Mark Henry speech. Like, mm-hmm. I don't got it no more and all this other shit like. Like so, solo can get you know uh, a lot of headway in, you know, getting the rocket on him a little bit by getting the win. But 
how it's not really gonna hurt solo to lose. Mm -mm. Not to the goat. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna stick with Cena on this. Yeah, uh, John Cena currently is favored at minus one hundred mm -hmm. from our betting people. That is uh it's about as close as you can get to even odds. Yeah. But Solo Sokoa is like a plus one hundred, so he's pretty close on the odds too. Damn. Like this is this is traditional like football booking right here. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. <I'm> <laughs> I'm gonna go with the safe pick, even though uh we got the Vegas pick though. Right. I'm gonna go with the safe pick, John Cena. Like John Cena ain't been to Saudi since the first show five years over five years ago. Damn. And uh hasn't won a singles match. Or yeah, he hasn't won a singles match in over since then, since that Saudi show, actually. So has it been that time? Mm hmm Wow. Over two thousand days. He says. Yeah, so let's go with John Cena on that. That's one. so crazy. <laughs> Super crazy. Next up, uh, for the women's championship, EO Sky versus Bianca Bell Air. I don't think this was made official yet, so I'm, I'm sorry if this was spoiled for anybody. This was spoiled for me too. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's whatever. What's coming up? I accidentally started reading SmackDown spoilers for next week. Sorry. I didn't know there were spoilers. I thought it was like I thought it was a report over something that happened on the last episode. And then I was like, this shit didn't happen. I just watched it. This did not happen. And I was like, oh, these are next weeks. Let me close out of these. I don't like to get spoiled. She uh she made her intentions clear this past yeah, Friday. We, so. Yeah, we knew what was gonna happen though. So who you got yeah. winning this match? Oh uh, I don't like to see my queen lose, but it's uh I don't think it's gonna happen yet. Yeah. I don't think I don't think they're gonna give her the championship again. And then if, if you do, you run the risk of the same reason people don't care for Charlotte Flair. Right. We don't want that. So uh yeah. EO EO needs to win without damage control. Yes. Helping her. Like EO need she doesn't need to like get a clean win over Bianca. She can still cheat the win. Right. She just doesn't need help. Like, no interference. Let's let's do without that. Yeah. Man. We both going with EO? Yeah. Okay. We with it. Uh, for the Women's World Championship, we got a fatal five way. We got seven women on this show. Ooh. I don't know. How many women did we have on the last one? Do we have a, I think we had like three matches. Yeah, we had a lot of matches. It's Googleable. Let me see. We got Trish and Becky, Oscar, yeah. Bianca, yep, and Rhea and Natty. Yep. So we had, we had one more woman on this show than we had at the last Saudi show. It's like that total it's just progress. grows every time they go over there. Right. It's progress. Saudi had everybody at the damn fight though. So man, listen. <laughs> Saudi, hey, Saudi need to let us come out there. <laughs> one of you motherfucking shows. Vince was out here walking on his damn cane. Vince and Taker? Saudi. Yeah, man. What the hell was Vince and Taker doing at the fight? I don't know. Well, you know, Dana was out there. The Vince was at the, the interview. Little nigga and Dana like crazy. UFC, UFC, WWE, partnership. Boxing, top rank, premier boxing, all that. Right. I never thought I was I would be watching an event where in that building watching the event was Cristiano Ronaldo, Kanye West, and Vince McMahon. <laughs> never. That's a fact, though. But uh, anyway, back to back to the topic. Uh, Fatal Five Way for the Women's World Championship: Rhea Ripley, Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, and Raquel Rodriguez. Who you got winning? I don't see they, no title change taking I, I, place here. I was gonna see like they 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 trying to they trying to get you they trying to get you with you know some some potential here like you know Nia coming back, uh, Shane is in the match, you know what I'm saying? 
Raquel and Rhea got beef and they got history. Mm-hmm. But nah, it, it it can't go down like this because I didn't expect that we would be on this level with it by the time Rhea won the championship back in at Mania. But mm-hmm. it's like where she's come since then, it was since she turned and joined Judgment Day and everything like that. Where we've come since then, it's like you could tell this is going for something big. Mm-hmm. So yeah, as much as they, they're trying to get you with the numbers and stuff like that and the, the you know situation seems unwinnable. Nah, I think she gonna she gonna slip away with this one. That's the best way I could put it. She gonna slip away with it some kind of way, and uh, it'll be one of those she survives. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she she's keeping it though. It's really just a matter of who she gonna pin. Yeah, I maybe can probably see Zoe taking the taking the. I was L just here. about to say that. Yeah, but unfortunately. <laughs> Hate to Las say Vegas is going to take two L's on this show. I hate it. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, next up, this is a, probably going to be a controversial one here, but for the United States title, Rey Mysterio versus Logan Paul. The Maverick. We already know what time it is, man. I don't like it, but let's just keep it on it. We, we know what's going on. We know what's about to happen. Logan we knew what was about to happen when the man... Announced it after his fight, if you want right. to call it that, in the interview, like you knew exactly what was coming. <laughs> and the thing is, they setting up everything afterwards because he had the mm-hmm. he ran into Kevin backstage. You know him and Kevin still got beef. Yep, and it's, it, it'll be a good feud for you know for the U.S. title. The thing about it is, the Ray having the U.S. title doesn't matter because we don't we don't see it much. It's like Ray is not one of those people that needs titles anymore. You just don't. Yeah. I don't know what they did it for in the first place, unless they were going to transition to putting over Santos. Santos ain't pulled the trigger yet. I don't know what he's waiting for, but uh, nah. If that if that's not gonna happen, then you just do the next best thing. Because a title on Logan Paul means you've got more eyes, and more attention on it, which is what the mid card is supposed to have in the first place. Mm-hmm. So. Look, if we do it in the Saudi, so be it. it I, it's it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another note on that Santos thing. You asked what he waiting for. I think he's just waiting to go to Saudi Arabia. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's my prediction. Logan Paul wins cost him. because of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. He said, I don't need Ray Mysterio no more, man. I got I got somebody who's cool. That's cool. I don't need you no more. That 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 works <laughs> for me, man. I'll take that. I'll accept it. Yeah, I'm with that. Just for the, uh, just for just for Raymond looking stupid when it's all said and done. Like, why why you do that, man? I thought we was blood. I thought we was family. Familia. Familia. They're Latino, like no, fam. And then I'm gonna come on this show next week and hit Ray Mysterio <laughs> with you. Because I sure did. Well deserved. I already got it clipped up. It's on our YouTube. You yeah. can go go check our archives on YouTube. I talked about it. Facts. I had to have I had to have my receipts ready <laughs> well before it ever happened. This to let y'all know. I had to have my receipts ready just so I could be like I've never been so confident in something happening in my entire life as a wrestling fan. Yeah. It's just in your face, in your face for you to see. Obvious. And everybody can see it. It was obvious from the moment, the moment Santos Escobar walked into that locker room and sat down next to Rey Mysterio. Mm -hmm. It's been obvious. Some people just can't see it. You know what's crazy? crazy? The last three tag team partners that Rey Mysterio has had, full-time tag partners, have all mm-hmm. turned on him. Damn. Son. Yeah. Batista, Batista and Eddie Guerrero. Eddie. That's a damn shame. This is shameful. Where is your discernment, sir? It is, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> been 
18 years and you still just tripping. Just tripping. Like, like, Batista, like Batista, Batista was really your people because, you know, y'all kind of bonded since you and Eddie yeah. were both, y'all were both real close with Eddie. You know what I'm saying? Y'all wasn't that close. That's one thing. Eddie, you was with for, at that point, decades. Over, yeah, about two decades at least. You know what I'm saying? You, you knew that you knew who this dude was. He told you all the time. He lies, cheats, steals. Mm-hmm. He keeps saying all the time, "I can't beat you." He getting frustrated about it. At what point did you think he was this man be at like, WrestleMania? Right, he was pissed. And y'all right. was partners. Y'all was champions at the time. Exactly. Like the context clues were all over the place. He kept telling Raymond. me, "Like I, I gotta beat you. I gotta beat you." It's right there in front of you. So you was shocked and he went and beat your ass and then then try to take your son from you. Yeah, like he, he was he was dirty with it though. Yeah. That's part that's where the cheating come in at. It's like you would think that would do it. And now your son, like, I get it. That's your seed. You don't expect betrayal from your own child. But when he but turned I, on you, it took you too long to beat his ass over. Exactly. But I'm saying, like, after that, after your child, you shouldn't you shouldn't be feeling too trusting with anybody. Right. And you just wide open. Oh, yeah. We all, listen, my Mexican brother. We in here. We with it. I trust you. No questions asked. It's like me. Okay. Like, you know, we not just trusting random niggas that come up to us wanting to be partners. So, like, Hell Ray no. Mysterio, why are you trusting random Mexicans that's coming up to you that's on some Mexican solidarity? Like, so I'm saying, this man came to you. Again, I said it. I said it when we talked about it before. Smith came to you as a fan, brought right. brought one of your masks to you, and be like, you know, hey, hey, respect to you. I'd be like, okay, respect to you, but get the fuck out of my locker room, bro. Like, I didn't invite you. <laughs> you just right. say, oh, oh, yo, I, I appreciate this. We family, we family, we here, we embracing and everything like that. Now we in a group together, like. What? Nigga, nigga Santos walked out the room, door shut behind him, was like, damn, that was easy. <laughs> right. So yeah, Logan oh, Paul. God. Let's get it, man. How the how the wrestling world gonna react to Logan Paul, Grayson Waller, and Austin Theory being on the same show? Oh. It's gonna be a lot of negativity. A lot of negativity. See that, see that boy Grayson Waller pissed off the Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> Yo, I see. I love that. See, Grayson Waller is slowly trying to sway me. He's slowly trying to sway me. Hey, I told you I'm from saying. the jump, bro. I told you what it was from the jump. <laughs> oh man, he 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 wanted the best was out here. He really he really leaned into it. It's fine. It's just it's little things he be doing that just be like, oh, you nigga, I'm trying. I'm still trying to hate you, but god damn it. <laughs> He he came up in the Indies over there in Australia. He know everything about it. He long time wrestling fan. He's smart. He got yeah. a long, 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 long time in this business. Like stay healthy and just keep your head on straight. You good. You good, fam. Uh, let's get into our last two matches on Crown Jewel. We can get up out of here, man. Uh, two World Heavyweight Championship matches. Uh, these guys were the faces of the company. 10 years ago mm-hmm. and they still the faces of the company now and it is peak position uh, Seth freaking Rollins versus Drew McIntyre and uh, this one it's, it's a toss up to me and my yes. winner in this match is very dependent on no it don't depend it's not dependent at all uh, this is tough fam I don't know who's going to win. <laughs> and, and my thing is, you know, we've been saying this for a couple of weeks, like, Drew hasn't announced it to the world, but that man ain't he a face no more. Like, yeah. like, like, he, he, he ain't a face no more. Um, But that, that just brings me to, is he actually considering partnering up with Judgment Day and being a part of, or at least like being an ally to them or some shit like that. So then it's like, well, do they show up? Do they help him? Like, this is too, too many of these variables coming together. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then if he doesn't win, do they cash in after? Like, 
I uh, think we might get a cash in. We might get a cash in, and it don't matter who wins. And that's the other part. Like, Drew cashes in, but if Drew was to win and they cash in on him, it's like that, 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 that pain. I don't want to say that paints sympathy on him a little bit, but yeah. it takes it takes that heel off of him that a heat. little bit. Yeah. yeah. But then yeah. it's like he, he go after them. But that that would be the way I that would be the way I'll book it if Drew wasn't like kind of leaning into the to the heel stuff. Yeah, over yeah. The past several weeks. So the way right. I'm looking at it now, uh, we don't get a cash in for whatever reason. Um, it's not time yet. They say. So we don't get a cash in. Drew McIntyre just beats the shit out of Seth. Kind of like Brock beat the shit out of John Cena. Nah. And that's it. <laughs> but either way, I, I see the this title changing. Seth, Roll- yeah. Seth Rollins won the belt in Saudi Arabia. He going to lose it in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I mean, like. He been he been like hanging on after a lot of situations, a lot of times where we're thinking like, okay, it was gonna happen here. I I don't see it going much longer because it's like, nah. What more does he have to do? Like, he running out of people to run it with. Like Drew is kind of, as far as Raw is concerned, it's kind of hit because mm-hmm. he not Cody don't want that shit. He done told y'all he, he listen. Y'all can. I know what I want. <laughs> y'all can. Y'all can. Yeah, exactly. You know why I'm here. You can try that narrative all you want to. I ain't going for that shit. It's not right. happening. And I don't see Jay going at it yet. So yeah. it's like, as far as the the upper upper group of top guys is concerned, that's it. Like it ain't it ain't time for Gunther yet. No, not yet. Yeah, you kind of you kind of stuck on that, right? I think we're getting close though. We're getting close. Yeah, we're getting close. But yeah, let's uh let's go with Seth Rollins dropping the belt for me. That's my prediction. Official. Yeah. Yeah. New champ. First time, three time world champion, Drew McIntyre. First time world heavyweight champ. Uh and then this is this is likely the main event. Cause sure. why wouldn't it be? Yeah, the, know. the head of the table. Mm-hmm. Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief, versus who? Versus who? And with everybody <laughs> saying. saying L.A. Knight. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, that, sh- that should be having me hype. I ain't even going to lie. Yo, this motherfucker is disrespectful. Man, <laughs> listen. <laughs> My man didn't get his fireworks or nothing. He just is like. Nah, fuck all that noise. Like, right. I got places to be. You feel me? <laughs> it did. Like, that wasn't even the disrespectful part. This nigga sat at his chair. In his chair. <laughs> like, Yo. nah, don't move the table, fam. I'm here. It said, sat I'm at the at head of the table. Chair. Acknowledge me. It did lay his ass out at the end of the show. That's what I'm saying. Hey, yo, LA Knight about to get his ass cooked. Oh, my <laughs> God. Way. And he was de- talk- brought up the suffering sucker tash. Man, you know <laughs> Roman got PTSD from that shit. Like, Dang, that's a trigger. Dog flipped the table. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even flip the table like the way niggas flip tables. This nigga yeah, nah. flipped the table and hit him in the face with Assaulted it. Assaulted <laughs> this man with the table. <laughs> Damn, dog. Yeah, Roman. Nah, I Roman love it though. Retain. Yeah, I, I like yeah. that. Cause, Cause, Cause everybody else, like, ain't nobody else stepped to Roman like that yet. Right. It's been three years. It, like the the last person that stepped to Roman like that was probably Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Like Seth trolled him a little bit, but like Seth wasn't on some disrespectful shit. Like, yeah, no, you know, man, fuck you. I don't give a fuck who you are. Type shit. Like, no, he was just he was just digging up some some sore topics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He put that knife in there so he know how it how how it, how bad it still be hurting sometimes. But man, a lot a lot of other dudes kind of just be like, "Well, no, I can beat you." They they take a a more respectful approach. L.A. Knight is like, "I don't go fuck who you are, what what your name is, what your title is." Like, I'm me. I've been doing my thing to get here. So uh, 
I'm coming to beat your ass and take that title. <laughs> like, <laughs> what everybody's saying. Yes, sir. But era, everybody throwing the ones up. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't winning this. I like I like that they presented him strong like this. So he, he he's gonna get a boost from this L, but for sure. He's gonna take the L. For sure. And uh that's it, man. This will be a fun, fun event. Shout out to Saudi Arabia putting on the good shows. And uh we got some football to watch, so we're gonna get up out of here. I I I look like I'm be losing some money here. <laughs> Yeah. Again, Patrick Mahomes. Same man. I'm Don't get put on my list now. now. I'm looking at this shit now. I'm like, oof. They said you was better than than Tom Brady, and you out here losing to the the, the Broncos. Broncos. Broncos got seventy put on their head. Yeah, and you ain't had touchdown yet in the second That's quarter. That's a problem. Second, second quarter just started, so we stall them out for a little bit. But I'm gonna need like I'm gonna need two touchdowns this quarter at least. Right. At least. That's what I'm saying. From Mahomes. No, don't run that bitch in. Don't do none of that. Yeah, man. Don't. Because I remember first, when I first started betting, I got screwed like that. Because it was like the one thing I was missing. Uh, I seen Pat Mahomes anytime score. And <clears throat> I, forget, I, for, I, I forgot to read that he had to run in. Yeah. He threw like three <laughs> touchdowns. And I'm looking. I'm like, yo, hold on, fam. <laughs> That that should be mine. What's going on? He got a hit score. He got a physically running. In. I'm like these niggas. That was a, the rule. That should be throwing me off. That was like two racks. I would have won off of that. And they, they just oh, that, so I would have been sick. Right. Been sick. <laughs> oh, when man. I first started betting, I did some stupid shit. What happened? It it worked out in my favor, but like now as as a little bit more experience, better. I would not have bet on this. Uh, the year Seahawks won the Super Bowl, they yeah. were a uh, nineteen uh, point favorite. <laughs> oh Lord, Jags! And I took Seattle, and they covered. <laughs> I would never do that again. <laughs> but it worked out in my favor. It, it it was pretty stupid at the time, but yeah, man. shout out to innocence, yeah. Shout Facts. out to innocence, man. Uh, plug your socials. We're gonna get up out of here. Yeah, yeah. Y'all can find me at Rehabit24 on Instagram and on Twitter. Also, y'all make sure y'all go check out the Havoc Hour where I talk sports and entertainment. New Heat yeah. is up there. Last week, just recorded a new episode. Got a new concept. You know what I'm saying? Switched it up a little bit. Had my guys on here. My boy Josh as well. So that's up now on those streaming platforms. Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts. I think Spotify, uh, not Spotify, Anchor. Yeah, Spotify, Anchor doesn't like merge together. Because I went on there to upload yeah. it, and they said they're basically the same thing now. So, yeah. So, y'all can check it up there. And the video version is always up on YouTube. So, yeah. So, New Heat. Go check that out. For sure. And I am the Thespian T.C. Fontaine, a.k.a. T.C.F. Baby. Please say the baby. I uh, I was going to update y'all on some of these Young Kings Wrestling Awards, but I don't got any new updates right now. Not yet. You can probably guess some of the winners <laughs> on some of these. My, the keep a check is the one I'm 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 really excited about. <laughs> I, about I just that, I just added Ric Flair to that list. That's the that that's done the turned only. into a race now. Yeah, there's there's 14 nominees so far. <laughs> <laughs> they going crazy. It's, it's a bunch of people I'm missing. Y'all want to know the nominees yeah. so far? Uh, Jake Roberts because mm-hmm. he getting paid by WWE and AEW. Uh, Kevin Nash, of course, is on the list. He's the award is named after him, the trophy. Of course. We'll give out the Kevin Nash trophy for the Keep a Check Award. Uh, right. Gallows and Anderson on there because what? How many matches have they had on TV this year? Shit. Carl Anderson got like two matches. He just got whooped by yeah. Jimmy Uso a few weeks back. Right. And then he's been gone. He disappeared. Mm-hmm. Brian Kendrick on the list. Because he back in WWE training, ain't he? I think so. Or at least he trained uh, Bad Bunny. Yeah. For that match he had. Yeah. Natty Nyhart on the list. I don't know why I put her on the list, but she on there for whatever reason. I don't don't, don't remember exactly why I put her on the list, but she on there. (laughs) Probably probably because she get all the title matches somehow. Some bullshit. 
Actually, yeah, I think it was her. Just judging by the order of things here, because if I have Brian Kendrick on there for training Bad Bunny, I gotta have Natty on there for getting the match versus Rhea at Night of Champions. So that 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 sounds about that, right. That's true. Uh, we're rounding out that list. Uh, Jeff and Karen, Jerry, <laughs> <laughs> package deal. Mm. Uh, Rhino, Rhino on that list. He's still getting checks from Impact. Uh, Eric Young. Still getting checks from everybody too. Facts. I got Jay Cargill on the list. Okay. She, she getting the checks for show everywhere. Big checks. Yeah. She, she out here owning football leagues and shit. Mm-hmm. Like crazy. I got a uh, Mike and Maria Bennett getting them checks from Tony Khan. <laughs> Woo. I hope it was CM Punk. It. I know CM Punk still getting some uh some deferred payments. <laughs> I know he is. Severance Bay. And uh Tyler Breeze is is like we, we already talked about him. And now yeah. Rick Flair is on that list too. Damn. Hey, Rick Flair. Rick Flair was a nominee last year. So. This shit turned into rat race. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> One of the worst movies of all time. Yeah. But yeah, I look, I still like watching it though. That's the crazy shit. Hell yeah. Like, <laughs> like, that fucking Cuba Gooden Jr. and Mr. Bean in the same movie. What was that? Oh, about? I, I have no idea. I was so lost when I first saw that movie. <laughs> Just running through oh, Las Vegas man. trying to get a check. Right. <laughs> good movies, good movies, man. Yeah. Good bad movies. That's on our trash movie list. Facts. We should have talked about that a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Hey guys. You already know. Said I'll be back to hold you down. I don't want to leave you, baby, dee, baby, dee. But we got to go right now. And uh, we'll be back next week with some uh, some results, some grades for Crown Jewel. And maybe some more stuff. We'll see. Straight up. We'll be back with another one. Another one. We out of here. Go. Woo, on time. On time, too. Love it.